You know, I often wondered what would happen if you stuck one of these. This is a dead EL34 from my old amplifier. I often wonder what would happen if you put one of these things in a microwave oven and turned it on. Let's find out. Cool. It broke the top off it. Check that out. <laughs> we blew the top clear off of it. Now we can take this thing apart and dissect it and see what's inside it. I never expected that it would just clean, break the top clean off right where the uh, right where the getter flash was, right, right at the top, right. It's like it's and the tube is warm too, right. But it, it's a clean break. It's like like I couldn't have cut that thing cleaner with a glass cutter. Holy smoke! That's incredible. So say this was a dead tube. I certainly wouldn't do it with a good one. But this one here was one from my old amp that was uh, it was dead. So no point in keeping a dead tube that won't amplify. But let's take this thing apart and see exactly what's inside the thing. But that was kind of cool. Let's, let's, let's nuke it a bit more and see if it sparks some more. Okay, I don't want to burn out my microwave, but that's kind of cool. So we've got these, uh, got this old vacuum tube here that I successfully detopped in the microwave. I think what we'll do now is we'll open this thing up and uh, take a look at the internal structure. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to heat it up with a torch. And I'm going to hit it with ice. So I'm going to heat the glass up here, get the glass hot. And then if I rub ice on it, it should break. And that way I should be able to get the top off without uh, the glass shattering too much. Which I've now cooled it. And now I should be able to just remove the top. Now, I didn't create a big mess. Got a couple of little pieces of glass here that we'll clean up. And then we'll take a look at the structure of this old EL34B tube. Now one thing a lot of people don't realize is that vacuum tubes are actually made by hand. And the, the person who made this actually numbers the pieces. If you look down here, you'll see that they've actually written in pencil a number on the top of the tube. This is all sealed inside. So these are actually constructed by craftsmen by hand in a factory before they're evacuated. They don't use machines to make vacuum tubes. This piece at the top here this is called the getter. Let's clip that off. This is the getter. And what the getter does is once the air is evacuated out of the tube, they use a, an induction heater to heat this up. And what it does is the, the chemicals that are coated on the getter burn and create that silver coating you see around the inside of the tube on the dome or it could be on the side. And what that does is in the process of the getter burning, it burns up any oxygen that might remain in the tube because it's impossible to get a a perfect vacuum. You can get the vacuum as close as they can, but it's not really possible to get a perfect vacuum. So what the getter does is the getter uses up any air that remains in the tube to give you that perfect seal. 
and it also continues to react with any air that might leak in. So if, if, if a seal is not perfect and over time a little bit of air does manage to gas in through the pins for example, it will uh, use up that oxygen. We're going to take off these, these are, uh, I forget what the name of these are, they, what they do is they, dis they, they displace electrons that are, uh, they're, they're connected to the grid and they, they suppress emission from the, from the cathode coming off the top here. They're a suppressor grid. That's what they are. So we're going to take them off and then we're going to take the tube apart. So let's, uh, let's just take this mica insulator off on the top. I want to show you what's on the inside. So we'll just cut this off. This is just a mica insulator. And what we'll see down inside the tube is we'll see the grid structure. Kind of a damaged one, but here's our, this is our plate, this outside cavity. This is where our high voltage is applied. The cathode is in the middle. It's going to open up the plate here. I'm just going to cut it. we can see the inside of it. Now we can start to see the grid structure inside the tube. I'll just remove the plate completely on both sides here. This is where your electrons bombard this when the tube is operating. The electrons are emitted from the cathode. The cathode is in the middle of the tube here. And that's the most center um, element. And then around the cathode there are the two grids. Let's just remove the tube from its base. So here's our cathode and grid array. If I further separate the mica insulator here, actually remove the grids from its support and now I can actually remove the cathode there's the cathode assembly there so the cathode assembly is heated by the heaters which are inside the cathode I can pull the heaters out if I can there's there's the heaters so that's the heater wires where's my hand here there's the heater wires the heaters heat up and provide heat to the cathode. This is the cathode. Electrons then stream out from the hot cathode into the control grids. And on this tube there are a couple of grids. This being a pentrode there are three sets of grids. The innermost grid, the G2 grid, Let's see if I can separate these grids here and I apologize if I'm not on camera because I can't see what I'm doing. My big monitor doesn't work when I'm in 4K, so I'm just kind of guessing as to what is in frame. If I separate the grids here, ah, there's one grid there. One grid, and then there's two more grids that are wound around. Just to, to, they're just they're flat, and then just a spool of wire that's, that runs around the grid. Now I can separate these grids so you can see what they look like. What they do is control the emission of electrons from the cathode. So when you apply a voltage to your grid, it attracts electrons or repels electrons. So if you have a negative uh, voltage on your grid it will repel because like forces repel like if you take two magnets and you put the two north poles together they're going to push away if you put a north to a south they're going to attract well in the case of a vacuum tube think of your cathode as your your south pole and think of your anode here as the north pole and the electrons are going to stream off the cathode and be attracted towards the anode and what these control grids do is by varying the bias 
voltage on the grids if you increase your negative voltage on the grid that the, the negative uh, electrons will prevent the electrons from the cathode being attracted to the anode and if you apply a more positive uh, going voltage to the grid well they'll attract more electrons towards the anode you might wonder why the electrons aren't attracted to the grid what stops the electrons from hitting the grid and going down the grid well nothing some of them do but most of them are moving so fast at this point that they pass right through the grid and then they're attracted to the more positively charged plate so you don't have a lot of electrons electrons that actually go into the grid itself most of them pass straight through it the reason we have additional grids is to increase our gain so in a triode you have just one grid around your cathode and then your plate that is the simplest tubes of tubes it's called a triode because there are three components or three elements you've got your cathode you've got your grid and you've got your plate this is a pentrode so a pentrode has five elements it's got the cathode it's got your first grid it's got your second grid and it's got your third grid and how depending on how the tube is wired or configured a pentrode can operate in, in a couple different modes it can operate in what's called an ultralinear mode it can operate in a true pentrode mode and it can operate as a triode it all depends on how you apply voltage to that second grid sometimes called G3 or G2 now in a pentrode like this the third screen the outermost screen here is typically tied to the cathode this is your control screen so it's held at a negative potential and its job is to allow or to force electrons that pass through it that hit the plate from reflecting back so as the electrons pass through the third screen on their way to the plate sometimes they don't make it to the plate sometimes they bounce around they hit other electrons because of course electrons repel each other so other electrons that are arriving at the plate could repel electrons back towards the cathode so once they pass through this last screen the screen is negatively charged with respect to the plate they actually prevent the electrons from going back and getting back to the control grid where they could influence the control grid so this is a more of a suppressor it stops the electrons from going back the third screen or the third grid is uh, can be wired multiple ways the G3 grid can be wired to your B plus source which then it acts as a, an acceleration grid turns the tube into what's called a pentrode uh, when the tube is operating as a pentrode that positive charge will attract as electrons pass through the G2 or G1 depending on how you count some people count all the elements so they consider the first the first uh, element the cathode is the first and then they would count it as G2, G3 and G4 other people don't count the cathode so then it's G1, G2 and G3 for simplicity I'm going to refer to the main screen as G1 the accelerator screen as G2 and the suppressor screen as G3 this being the suppressor so your G2 grid if it's tied to your B plus which is full potential it'll act as an acceleration grid and pull the electrons towards the plate and if it is wired to the plate itself in other words if the if the G2 grid is tied directly to the plate on the plate side of the output transformer because in pentrode mode it's supplied onto the B plus side of the output transformer if it's supplied directly to the plate it becomes null it's now the same as the plate it's the same potential as the plate and the tube behaves more as a triode the tube has less power the tube has less gain um, and then there's another mode that these can be wired called ultralinear where they use a center tap off of the output transformer which allows the G2 grid to float somewhere in between the plate potential and B plus because that center tap on the transformer obviously the voltage is going to vary on that center tap depending on the amount of current passing through the tube anyway um, that's pretty much it for the anatomy of a, of a pentrode power tube uh, I'd say I was just gonna throw this thing out and I had this brainstorm that it might be a good idea to microwave this that we can take it apart and see what it looks like I um, hope you enjoyed this one and, and my nonsense not knowing how the hell a tube works
Okay. Does that make any sense? Probably not. We'll catch you in the next one.